G'day folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some more extreme surgery on the Model T. So it, uh, it has a bit of an issue. Let's pull up, pull up a stump here. <clears throat> it has an issue whereby um, I've detected uh, an amount of end float in both wheels, which means the center um, is also permitted to, to move this way. What stops it doing that is uh, a set of shims and uh, they typically are made out of a material called Babbitt which is um, remarkably soft. It's a bearing material and uh, if it is the original Babbitt it's likely to have uh, completely crumbled away. Um, now what's the problem with that? Well the problem is uh, a Model T Ford of this vintage um, doesn't have any rear brakes, doesn't have any front brakes. It, um, the, the braking is, is coming via the drive shaft, so effectively there's a transmission brake there. So what can happen is uh, if the crown wheel moves enough this way, um, it'll come off the, um, the pinion. And if that happens, you don't have any drive, you don't have any brakes. So it's a, a very dangerous situation, which uh, I'm hoping to just nip in the bud. So what do I have to do? Um, uh, wheels have to come off. There's a dedicated puller to pull those off. Um, there's radius rod with two bolts down here. Uh, there's also the spring perches here. Uh, and there's a bunch of um, bolts attaching the torque tube uh, to the um, axle housing. They have to come off. So on the face of it, it's a reasonably simple axle removal. Uh, but as these things can go, sometimes they can we can have uh, issues that were uh, unforeseen. So um, I'm going to set you up and show you how a, a wheel puller works. Okay. You might have seen this in a, another video that I've done. So this brass cap on the screws uncovers the threads that you need to screw the puller onto. And we have a cot up in here that needs to come out. As I've had these uh, brakes apart, um, I am waiting for some, some parts from the US, which I've had on hold pending this job, because I just want to make sure what I've ordered is what is actually necessary. Next step is to take off the, the wheel nut, sorry, the hub nut. And again, it wasn't particularly tight because I, uh, I've had it all apart and I haven't driven the car. I just needed it to be able to roll around the workshop. Okay. Puller goes on. So glad that thread has fixed itself. First time I did this, it took me almost an hour to get the um, to get the tool on because of that first uh, the entry point onto the thread was just sort of burnt over. <clears throat> wasn't any good. Just tightening up the, um, the locking nut. Let's go. That's drawn the wheel straight off. I'll do the locking nut. And 
run the tool off. And it's rinse and repeat for both sides. Bit of jack action. one wheel and the cotter, uh, the key just fell out of the axle okay so now you can see what I have to uh, what has to come off so we've got to get the these two bolts undone which holds the radius arm and these two spring perches while I'm here I might uh, just make sure we've got proper oilers on all four. I think what I've got on the other side, I'll show you a little bit later, is um, uh, an oiler on the top with an oiled shaft like this one. And also this oiler. And on the bottom, nothing. So something went a bit awry there. Probably swap, swap them around if we can. Okay, I'm uh, going to get cracking on the other side. Okay, I'm going to take the brake rod off, so it's, it's a cotter pin, clever, clever spin, yep, and then that will come out. Um, I'm not going to walk you through how to take two bolts off here, or um, bolts and nuts off these spring perches, so I'll just get on and do that. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. I took the radius um, bolts out, and before I've started doing the spring perches there, realized that that spring's gonna be under quite a bit of tension because the weight was on it. So, broken out the trusty engine crane and uh, suspended the old girl, um, all the weights off the axle, as you can see, it's not on that axle stand there. So yeah, we've got ourselves in a lower energy setting which is good so um i'll just continue on okay so here's what we've got we've got the the shackle off and uh, this part does look serviceable which is good uh albeit these oil holes do look uh, a bit gummed up there was plenty of lubrication um i've had to wipe some of it off and the the wear in here isn't too bad nor there uh, one thing I do notice is the other side, which we'll get to, uh, has been fitted upside down. It's been fitted this way up. In fact, it should be this way up. Uh, it goes this way up because this one um, feeds oil to here. Uh, and and the bottom one has its own oiler here. So you've, um, you've got both getting oiled. When it's upside down, um, you've only got oil through here. You can oil this as well if you wish. Uh, but of course, the bottom, which goes through the, uh, the eye of the spring, doesn't get any lubrication. So it'll be interesting to see what the wear pattern is and hopefully it's not toast. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. The other thing of note is the, um, is the nut that holds um, this part of the spring perch on. Uh, did not have a, a collar pin at all. It's just spun on there. It was loose. Uh, as were these, incidentally. The uh, uh, radius arm bolts were both also loose. Um, yeah, that's never a good thing so um anyway we'll, we'll get on and keep going okay so here's the other side sorry about the lighting and the leads in the start of a storm here uh yeah these um these actually do look reasonably good the, the bottom one as i suspected was a bit dry but it could be dry because i didn't actually even notice that it does have an oiler um it was sort of hidden from view because it faces this way which sort of, sort of tucks it in behind there um, so yeah, now I know I'll, uh, I'll make sure that gets properly lubricated, lubricated, and um, I'll drop those in the parts cleaner. Same story here though. Uh, no, um, no cotter pin on here. Um, I do have to get this brake rod off, and um, these two radius um, bolts. 
Okay, last but not least, is just zipping these 5 8 nuts um, that hold the torque tube on. And uh, then the axle should walk backwards, supported on stands at the moment. Um, the springs are obviously completely disconnected. This is the last step. Might set you up and see if you can join in some of the fun. Okay, I've just set you up. This is the last part of the process. I've already zipped, um, zipped this one off. It was a stud that just came out. And the idea is that once these are off, I'll be able to run. Um, my arm's in the way, sorry. Be able to uh, walk the axle backwards. Okay, so it's not cooperating. Gonna need to uh, drop the torque tube out. So that's um, that's four bolts up there on the transmission. Let's have a look and see. There's four goldy looking bolts. I'll hold that on. Next step. I've um, gotten in there with a fair bit of uh, silicone. Oh, in my eyes. It's not such a bad thing dropping all this down anyway. I haven't been inside here yet. When they're challenging, it's going to be getting it back together again lining all these bolt holes up. Here it comes. Yeah, she's down. All right, so now that the torque tube's off at the front, Gives me leeway, I think, to get in here and do a bit of that action, noting that it's about to drop off the jack. Aye, it's all uh, pretty loosey goosey. Um, There's movement in there, but it's not what I'm expecting. Given that these are studs, maybe I can uh, put a, a jam nut on these and back the studs out. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll come back when I've done one or two. Okay, so here we are on day two. I ran out of sunlight yesterday. Um, it's a part to a point, so obviously it's off the car. Now, there are two studs remaining uh, here and it's equivalent on the other side. Uh, I'm just going to put um, cotter pins and nuts back on there and then I should be able to back that out. But uh, yeah, there's a, a real mess of kind of ooze coming out of the uni joint at the front. So it's not, it's a mixture of grease and probably engine oil. Uh, it's not, not the best, but at least it's well lubricated. And uh, yeah, pretty messy job, but... Um, Fairly gratifying all the same. So I'll hop in and take those two studs out and 
then it should all come apart. Okay, so this is where we're at with the last one. Now, um, this stud didn't have uh, a hole in it for the uh, cotter pin, so I've had to resort to the jam nut. Now, it is, um, it is working, but unfortunately I've had to sacrifice one of the nuts. I just didn't have a piece of hardware that would, um, that would fit. So I've had to grind the castellations or the castles off one nut, this one that I'm doing now, uh, because the threads just weren't long enough to get the second one on and, and to make a jam nut. But uh, we have progress, which is the main thing. I can easily get another one down at the clubhouse. We've got a, a massive spare parts section with all sorts of hardware. So I'll just, um, I'll just grab another one there. So yeah, hopefully once this comes off, we're going to be able to quickly separate torque tube and pinion from diff. Yeah, there's no hope in hell of um, getting things apart with the six studs in there. They're all interfering. The last one that was even interfering, just one stud. So um, yeah, they've got to all be off. Okay, I'll bring you back. Okay, this is where I'm stuck. Um, I've got the radius arms off now, so it's just torque tube and diff. Incidentally, the radius arms weren't holding anything, they were just in the way. Um, I'm going to a tap at that end to try and bring it forward and out. It just won't do that. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm just going to split the casing and uh, it, may be, it may be hung up somewhere in here there may be a, a lip that's getting caught on so I'll, I need to split it anyway but it's just going to be a bit messy so I'll grab a I'll grab a tray under it and get into that thought you could come in and join me for the for the last few you might get to see some gore at the very least we're going to see plenty of bloody fluid draining out yeah this was a very um, valuable exercise. The front uni joint's pretty flogged. Probably replace that as well while I'm in here. And this will be the last. To get a gentle hammering on. And that exemplifies, I suppose, why you don't use these sorts of um, power tools. And the purge of juice begins. Oh shit, <laughs> it's on the floor. Well, that was to be expected. a little bit of a tap. That's sort of want to come out. Okay, so this should come off now. something still. It's 
moving heaps. That's about as far as we're going to get that for the time being. Here we go. <laughs> One diff removed. I'll inspect that more carefully next. Isn't there supposed to be two washers? A thrust washer on this side. What do we got on this side? Got a plate. What looks like, it doesn't even look like a thrust washer. Hmm. Should get, should get things a bit cleaner. Definitely only one on that side. And it doesn't seem at all right, does it? Okay, this is what I got. A plate, that's not a thrust washer. And on the other side, two plates. So this axle's been bodged. Pretty hardcore. Okay, I'm gonna start tearing down the center. So there are only cotter pins in these three, really puny little ones here. Uh, these three come off and it splits the housing apart to, to get us our, uh, our little planetary gears in there. Um, I haven't got the best apparatus to hold it all, so I'm, uh, I'm probably just going to fast forward to having it apart and show you that. Got the bearings out there and not too bad, con the bearings are not in too bad condition. Um, but what I pulled out of the diff is in here. I'll drain that juice out and I'll show you what it is. Some fragments, very fine um, fragments, don't know what they are, and some seal. Uh, no evidence of any thrust washer that's been munched up. The, um, the gear oil was plenty glittery, but, um, but really there's not a terrible amount to write home about. So anyway, I'm going to crack on and open up this diff and then show you that. Okay, so here's the differential components all laid out. So uh, here we have the crown wheel. And these are the little spider gears that um, give you your differential action. Uh, the other side of the carrier, so that goes together like that. Um, Axially on either side, and you can see that splines in to those spider gears. Uh, this is the infamous three thrust plate situation. Uh, absolutely unacceptable. I, I honestly, I'm still shaking my head. So let's have just a really quick inspection. What we've got in here, so these, um, these are bushed individually. So you can see that there. Uh, wear doesn't look too bad on that. Um, bear in mind, this isn't a high mileage item. So these, uh, these gears only turn on their shafts uh, if there is one wheel wanting to travel or traveling faster than the other. So normally it'll be, they'll just be completely static. There is some wear of each of these. So I am going to look that up to see what's the tolerable amount. Um, not sure whether there's some, some sort of um, shim that goes on each of those, but we'll look into that. Um, bearings, yeah, as I mentioned, they're, um, these are the inner bearings. The outer bearings are still in the axle tubes. And that pretty much sums it up. What, we've, uh, what I've noticed on here is that 
It does look like it's tried to chew something up at some point. You can see on the outside here some pretty decent um, decent marks. The teeth on the crown wheel though, they look really good. Um, what I'm looking for is, is any pitting on the teeth uh, and they, they look really, really, really decent. So, yep, definitely reuse that. Um, that's really all I have to say about that at the moment. I'll take you over and show you something else. Okay, over to the pinion. Uh, major yikes kind of moment here. So, I kid you not, this is loose. Uh, trend continues of no collar pin. And this is what happens. Things get loose. And you lose your pinion gear. So, yeah, I'm... Reason, reasonably shocked. I don't get shocked very easily, but but that's that is shocking. Um, yeah, so at least I didn't have to pull the pinion off with the puller. Uh, so that yeah, that needs going through as well. Terrible people. What makes me really bloody. Makes me really cross. I've driven this car, what, 500 miles? And, um, you know, it could have killed me. Losing brakes and, and uh, yeah, it's just not acceptable. I'd, how you could do that in all conscience gets me. Anyway, that's enough of the rant. Okay, so that's it for the time being. Um, uh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, there is another part missing. So between between the two axle ends, so when this axle is facing the other way, there's a little puck that sits between that, that effectively sits in here, and uh, that was missing also. So I'll do a bill of materials, get some parts ordered, and then there'll be a bit of a wait for the for the next episode. In the meantime, uh, Mini is waiting on some parts for the engine rebuild, so I am going to transfer over to other work on the Mini. I'm going to take subframes off and, uh, and maybe even start looking at the interior if we get there. So thanks again for watching and see you later. Stay safe.